Kastile everyone. In this class, we are going to learn about class 12 geography. In class 12 geography, we have two books. So the name of the first book is called Fundamentals of Human Geography. In this book, we have 10 chapters in total. So in this class, we are going to discuss about chapter number five, that is primary activities. Since this chapter is quite lengthy, because of that, I have made two part, part one and part two. So in this class, we are going to learn about first part of the chapter. So this particular diagram shows or is the key or the main theme of the chapter. That is chapter number five, primary related activities. In this chapter, we have four main topics hunting and gathering, pastoralism, agriculture, and mining. So these are the four main topics. Under these four main topics, we have subtopics. First type of primary type of activity that is hunting and gathering. Hunting and gathering, we are going to learn hunting and gathering, two part. Pastoralism, we have two part pastoral nomadism or it is also called nomadic herding another one is called pastoral realism type is commercial livestock breeding under agriculture we have two main part land based agriculture or cultivation and other farming activities land based agriculture or cultivation is further divided into two subsistence agriculture and commercial agriculture Subsistence agriculture is further divided into two, primitive subsistence agriculture and intensive subsistence agriculture. Intensive subsistence agriculture, we have again two part. Intensive subsistence agriculture dominated by wet peaty and intensive subsistence agriculture dominated by other than wet peaty, that means wheat. From land based cultivation, the next topic is commercial agriculture. From commercial agriculture, we are going to discuss about five commercial agriculture related activities. They are plantation agriculture, extensive commercial grain cultivation, Mediterranean agriculture or farming, and horticulture and or we can say market gardening. Next topic related with agriculture is other types of farming or agriculture. Uh, they are further divided into two animal related farming and uh, institutional related farming. Animal related farmings are further divided into two, mixed farming and dry farming. Institutional related farmings are further divided into two, cooperative farming and collective farming. And the last main topic that we are going to learn uh, is mining. So mining, under mining, we are going to learn about the factors affecting mining and types of mining. Factors, we are going to uh, learn two factors, economic factors and physical factors related to with mining. And types of mining, we have two types, surface mining and underground mining. So this particular uh, diagram is the key or the main theme of the chapter, that is chapter number five. Next. What is we next the most important thing that we need to know is prime what is meant by primary activities so primary activities means those human activities which are related with the direct use of natural resources or those human activities which are directly related with the use of physical environment so these types of uh, human activities on this planet are called primary activities. 
examples of primary activities such as hunting and gathering agriculture and mining so these are the some of the examples of primary related activities so in this uh, chapter we are going to learn each primary types of activities one by one the first primary related activities that we are going to learn here is hunting and gathering flowing are the main characteristics or the features related with hunting and gathering hunting and gathering are the oldest economic activities human economic activities that means hunting and gatherings are the oldest human activities that were adopted by human being when human being first appeared on this planet so these two are the oldest human activity adopted by human being on this planet before 12000 years ago almost all the people living in this on this planet are engaged with these two type of activities only but nowadays most of people are not doing these two type of activities but only few people are engaged with these two types of activities so that means the second point is at present still some people are practicing these two type of activities so it is practice these two types of uh, activities are still practiced uh, practiced by uh, few people only few number of people on this planet at present so usually nowadays they are practicing in a region where there is a very harsh climatic condition so at present still few people are engaged with the two type of activities so mostly these people are uh, they are settled or in a region where there is a very harsh climatic condition so harsh climatic means we need to know region having a very hot and cold climatic condition that is called harsh climatic condition so at present still some people are engaged with uh, these two type of activities and they are mostly located in an region where there is a very harsh climatic condition that means very very hot and very very cold uh, climatic condition so these type of people they are always moving that means wandering from one place to another places why they are always moving from one place to another places means in search of food how they are searching the food means by extracting both plants and animals with help of simple tools so simple tools we can say stones and sticks with help of these type of tools they are extracting plants and animals for their food and in simple wood it is called foraging usually they live in a very small group small group very small group in this small group the number of people is very very again very small that means only 10 to 15 maximum 20 people in a group that means they live in a very small group and in small very very small in number and they don't have any personal properties or and belongings so nowadays we all have our belongings and properties like houses uh, agricultural land and many many other items in our houses but they don't have such personal properties and belongings they are always because of that they are always moving from one place to another place in search of food at present some gathering has become very very commercial or we can say very very important in modern times for example collection of medic valuable medicinal herbs tree barks so and nuts and these and nuts and fruit so uh, gathering of these types of items or products become very very commercial and very very important in modern times so they uh, they are gathering still some people are gathering uh, valuable medicinal herbs tree barks and uh, fruits and nuts and they are selling in the market so nowadays uh, gathering has become very very commercial and very very important in modern times so these are the some uh, of the characteristics related with hunting and gathering this particular picture shows uh, life of hunters and gatherers 
that means before 12,000 years ago during stone age we can say people are engaged most of people are engaged with these two type of activities hunting and gathering we already discussed that at present still some people are engaged with hunting and gathering they are mostly located in a region with very harsh climatic condition so here harsh climatic condition they have divided into two high latitude zones and low latitude zones usually high latitude zones means those regions which are located very close to the north and very close to the south pole so those regions are categorized those latitudinal those those countries those regions which are latitude uh, which are located very in a very high latitude that means more than 45 degree north and 45 degree south we can say these regions are high latitude zones so these regions are called or known to be as high latitude high latitude zones low latitude zones means those region those area which are very near to equator that means in between topic of cancer and topic of capricorn so these regions are called low latitude zones usually region those regions which are located very near to the equators are very we can usually throughout the year we can experience very hot type of climate uh, because of solar direct uh, solar rotation and uh, near to the north and south pole these are called high latitude zones usually uh, because of sun's uh, solar rays inclination to this region we have uh, low temperature or minimum type of temperature that means these regions are called to be as low latitude zones or very cold zones high latitude zones such as now nowadays still people are practicing these two type of activities that are they are hunting and gathering they are usually at present they are uh, practicing in a region with high latitude zone that means cold climatic condition such as northern canada northern eurasia and southern chile here we have southern chile this region still some people are practicing uh, hunting and gathering mostly gathering subsistence gathering they are practicing some people are engaged with these two type of activities mostly gathering near to the equator we can call it, these regions are called to be as low latitude zones such as amazon basin near to equator tropical africa very near to equator northern fringe of australia not mentioned in your they have not marked in your located labeled in your this one uh, textbook but the northern free zone means this region we can say northern free zone uh, northern free zone australia interior part of asia so these are the region with harsh climatic condition very hot and cold climatic condition where still some people are doing hunting and gathering mostly they are engage with gathering type of activities next type of primary activities that we are going to learn is pastoralism so what is meant by pastoralism 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 means animal rearing and grazing it is called Rearing and grazing of animal is called pastoralism. So what is meant by pastoralism means rearing and grazing of animal is called pastoralism. Rearing and grazing can be divided into, uh, can be one, so there are different ways, different methods of rearing and grazing of animals. Animal rearing and grazing can be primitive, which is carried on a very subsistence nature, in subsistence nature or subsistence base by nomad, one type of uh, rearing of animal is a very uh, primitive or uh, in a very subsistence nature that are mostly done by nomads of the world nomads peoples in the world and another type of pastoralism is commercial basis in modern times so these are the two types of pastoralism that we are going to learn in this uh, class 
Pastoralism is further divided into two broad categories. They are nomadic herding or another name is called pastoral nomadism. Another one is commercial animal grazing. So these are the two types of uh, animal rearing and grazing of animals uh, that we are going to discuss in this class. Nomadic herding that means the first picture nomadic herding that one is the old and the tradition that this type of uh, rearing and grazing of animal is mainly for self-consumption or we can say subsistence in nature but if we look at the second image commercial this type of uh, rearing and grazing of animal is mainly for commercial purposes so these are the two types of pastoralism that we are going to learn in this class First one is nomadic herding or we can say pastoral nomadism. What is mean by nomadic herding or pastoral nomadism? So it is a old or a traditional way of rearing and grazing of animals mainly for self-consumption. It is called nomadic herding. It is called pastoral nomadism. So flowing are the characteristics of nomadic herding or pastoral nomadism. Primitive subsistence activity mainly for self-consumption. So nomadic herding is primitive. Primitive here means very very old or a traditional way of rearing and grazing of animal mainly for these are mainly for subsistence in nature. That, that means mainly for self-consumption purposes. So this that is the first characteristics of nomadic herding or pastoral nomadism. Here, the herders means nomad people. Herders, they are totally dependent or rely on animals for their food, clothes, shelter, and transport. That means uh, herders here means nomad people. They are totally dependent on their animals for food, clothes, shelter, and transport. One main peculiar characteristics of this pastoralism, uh, this, uh, pastoralism is transhumance in nature. What is meant by transhumance in nature? Transhumance in nature means seasonal migration of herders. So herders mean we know that people who are herding the animals. Herders, seasonal migration of herders along with their livestock. That means transhumance means uh, transhumance means seasonal migration of herders along with their animals. So that means uh, they have a pattern of movement uh, in this particular character. So during that means during summer season they will move up to the mountainous regions in order to get better grass and water for their livestock and animals and during winter seasons they will move down to the low low lying areas low areas in order to get better water and grass for their animals for example uh, in himalayan region in india gujars bakarwals Gaddis and Bhodiyas. So these tribal people are engaged with uh, these type of activities, nomadic herding, and they are uh, doing transhumance in nature. That means they are moving in a seasonal basis in order to get better grass and water for their animals. During summer season, they will move up to the mountainous regions in order to get better grass and water for the animals. And during winter season, they will move down to the low lying areas in order to get better grass and water for the animals so here the animals are totally dependent on natural grass and waters that means natural resources because of that they are moving from one place to another places on a seasonal basis types of animal red so based on geor different geographical climatic geographic uh, geographical and climatic condition different types of animals are red and graze in different parts of the world so flowing are the main regions and animals are rare in different regions of the world. In the tropical Africa is famous for the tropical Africa is famous for cattle rearing. In Sahara, Aztec Desert, that means uh, Sahara, this means the desert region, sheep, goats, and camels are usually rare in this region because of geographical and climatic condition. In mountainous areas of Tibet, and Andes. These are the mountainous regions. Yak and 
llamas are mostly red and reindeers are important in arctic and subarctic regions so these are the different types of animals are reared in different geographical and climatic conditions in the world so here yak this type of yaks are mostly rare and graze in mountainous regions camels are mostly in desert regions and cattle are mostly rare in semi-arid desert regions and these are mostly rare in the um, snow covered uh, or cold climatic condition region so these are the uh, different types of animals are rare and grazed by uh, people in different geographical and climatic conditions of the world so at present still some people are engaged with these uh, types of primary related activities so the first region is an extensive region that extends in the very very large region extends from sahil to sahara and in africa to uh, here we have central asia next to that if we move to here mongolia and central china so this particular dark shaded region shows this region still some people are in doing uh, this one pastoral nomadism or nomadic herding in this region Tundra region of Eurasia next region so if you look at the world map this is this particular red line shows equator so mostly nowadays most of people who are engaged with hunting and this one uh, people who are engaged with pastoral nomadism they are mostly doing an uh, at the northern hemisphere of the world of our earth this so this is equator north of equator is called northern hemisphere and south of equator is called southern hemisphere so if you look at the map we can generalize we can say that most of people who are engaged in uh, pastoral pastoral nomadism are located at the north of equator at north of equator but we also have only few people are doing pastoralism at the southern hemisphere so southern hemisphere means south southwest southwestern africa still some people are doing pastoral nomadism and western madagascar region so this is the madagascar island western madagascar island at western madagascar madagascar island still some people are doing this type of primary activity that is called pastoral nomadism so these are the region this particular dark shaded uh, uh, map shows areas or region where still people are doing pastoral nomadism next topic is commercial livestock rearing so flowing are the characteristics of commercial livestock rearing so characteristics we can also say the features of commercial livestock rearing what is mean by commercial livestock rearing so commercial livestock rearing is mean what is mean by commercial livestock rearing means commercial livestock rearing is it is a advanced modern scientific way of rearing and grazing of animal mainly for commercial purposes that is called commercial livestock rearing so here rearing of animal mainly for commercial purposes in a permanent ranches so ranches means large area um, where the, and in a particular large area they are permanently settling on that particular uh, place and they are rearing and grazing the uh, particular type of animals so that is called rearing of animal mainly for commercial purpose mainly for commercial purpose for sale and to earn profit that is called commercial purposes in a permanent ranges that means they are not moving on a seasonal basis they are always they are settled on a permanent place that is the first characteristics ranges so here the particular big area is further divided into number of sections or parts by fences with help of fences in order to reg regulate the animals for the photos uh, in order to give food for the animals in order to uh, 
regulate animals for the feedings and in order to uh, clean the animal shed. Because of that, uh, the ranches are divided into number of sections or number of paths with help of fences in order to regulate the animals in an efficient way. So as compared to uh, pastoral nomadism, commercial livestock rearing is more organized and here it is more capital intensive means we have to spend huge amount of money in order to buy the animals, buy the lands, in order to make fences in the ranches. So because of that, it is this commercial livestock rearing is more organized and more capital intensive that means we have to spend more money as compared to pastoral nomadism. So here there are specialized activities, specialized activity in rearing of cattle, sheep, goats and horses. So here they are rearing only a special kind of animals. They are not rearing animals in a mixed way. They are always rearing animals in a specialized way. Cattle means they are rearing only cattle. Sheep means they are only uh, rearing sheep. God means God. Horses means horses. That means they are specialized activity in rearing of cattle. Some people are uh, rearing and grazing of cattle for commercial purposes. Some people are rearing and grazing sheep for commercial purposes and some people are rearing and grazing goats and horses for commercial purposes. That means they are specialized in rearing of grazing and rearing and grazing of animals for commercial purposes. Here they are, they are emphasizing more on breeding. Cross breeding means mating of the animal in order to uh, have a better offspring. Uh, emphasis, they are emphasizing more on breeding, improvement of animals, disease control, and healthcare of animals. So they are emphasizing all these areas in order to get better profit, more profit by doing this type of uh, agriculture or we can say um, uh, farming. So these are the some of the characteristics of commercial livestock rearing. So this particular picture shows uh, in a ranches they have made fences. So that is that means this type of uh, animal commercial animal grazing is more organized and it is uh, this type of animal grazing is more expensive and more organized as compared to uh, nomadic herding. So that means here this particular uh commercial animal grazing is they are specialized only in cattle so here they are only uh, specialized in means uh, which animal means they are specialized only in uh, cattle only so they, this particular image shows um, what breeding breeding um, or we can say mating in order to get better offspring so distributions of commercial livestock rearing important countries or regions such as New Zealand so this map shows New Zealand south of Australia Australia Argentina Uruguay western part of USA so this particular uh, dark shaded ones and uh, dark shaded are are the region where uh, people are doing commercial livestock rearing. So mostly, uh, if we look at the map, mostly commercial livestock rearing is practicing in a region, mostly they are highly economically socially developed, not in a uh, socially economically poor country. So that if we look at the map means most of this type of farming is practicing in a region uh, where there is a more socially economically developed. So the third topic is agriculture. So based on method of farming, method of farming means what are the input, what are the tools and technologies that they are that are that our farmers are using in the world in order to produce, um, uh, in order to produce uh, crops, uh, and different types of crops are grown and livestock range livestock are rare, rare on the basis of these parameters. The agricultures of the world are divided into uh, in the flowing categories or systems. So the flowing are the main agriculture system. So why agriculture is called a system? System means uh, first we have to uh, sow the seeds. Uh, in order to sow the seeds, we have to plow the 
agricultural land we have to put water in the land uh, with help of uh, different tools and technology that is called input and process means the growth of uh, plant is called process uh, and finally output we are going to harvest the uh, crops so that because of these three process we can call it agriculture as a system because all these three um, process are included activities are included in um, agriculture because of that agriculture is called system so agriculture um, uh, a further divided into two subsist so the first type of agriculture that we are going to discuss and learn is uh, subsistence agriculture subsistence agriculture it is further divided into two so what is meant by subsistence so we need to know what is meant by subsistence subsistence means the cultivation of crop that is done mainly for self consumption that is called subsistence agriculture means cultivation of crops subsistence means mainly for self consumption so subsistence agriculture is further divided or grouped into two categories they are primitive subsistence agriculture and intensive subsistence agriculture the first type of subsistence agriculture that we are going to learn is primitive subsistence agriculture what is mean by primitive subsistence agriculture primitive subsistence agriculture it is old it is traditional or it is primitive way of cultivation of crops or primitive way of agriculture that is mainly for self consumption that is called primitive subsistence agriculture this is so flowing other characters so this is the primary form of agriculture that means it is the primitive old or the traditional way of cultivation of crop that is mainly for self consumption so that type of agriculture is called um, uh, primitive subsistence agriculture characteristics this type of agriculture are also called slash and burn agriculture so in order to make agricultural land first we have to slash the vegetations uh, which are grown on that particular patch of land so what if first we have to slash the vegetations like trees and shrubs herbs we have to uh, slash the tree and these uh, trees and later on we have to dry it uh, we have to dry these uh, vegetations and if they are dried we are going to burn these uh, vegetations and uh, finally ashes become um, ashes become some sort of this one it will give fertility to the soil so that is because of that it is also called slash and burn agriculture in order to make agriculture we have to slash and we have to burn uh, the um, vegetations in order to make a agricultural land here in this type of primitive subsistence agriculture they are using very simple tools such as twigs and stones with help of these simple tools they are cultivating the crops on a patch of land main crops what type of crop that they are cultivating or they are growing means cassava maize millets and hilly rice so after 3 to 5 years of farming on the same particular land they are moving and they are shifting to another land again they are doing slash and burn and they will cultivate the crop on that patch of land and they will stay on that particular land for farming land for they will cultivate on that particular farming land for 3 to 5 year after that again they will move to the another uh, area and again they will do slash and burn and again they will cultivate 3 uh, to 4 years and again they will move to another places sometimes they will move back to the previous land also agricultural land also so because of that uh, this type of primitive subsistence agriculture is also called shifting agriculture it is also called shifting agriculture why means every 3 to 5 years they are moving from one agricultural land to another agricultural land so because of that this type of agriculture is also called shifting agriculture so primitive subsistence agriculture is also called slash and burn agriculture because why means frequently they are slashing and burning the uh, vegetations in order to make agricultural land and this agriculture system is also called shifting agriculture so at present so since this type of agriculture system is old since but at present still some people are practicing this type of agriculture 
agriculture. At present, it is mainly practiced in a region with uh, in tropical rainforest by tribal people. So here, tropical means those um, countries or those regions which are located in between Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. So these are the two latitude zone uh, latitudes, right? One at the northern hemisphere and one at the southern hemisphere near to equator. So th those regions are uh, located in between these two latitudinal zones are called uh, tropical regions. So uh, usually if we talk about the tropical regions, we have uh, thick dense forests. Because of that, nowadays still some people are practicing this old type of agriculture that is called primitive, that is called slash and burn, that is called shifting agriculture. Mostly by which community means tribal communities. So at present still only few number of people are practicing this type of agriculture. Where means in the tropical regions. Tropical regions where means in the rainforest, tropical rainforest region. Which community means we can say tribal communities. Apart from that, these people are also doing hunting, fishing and gatherings. So apart from uh, agriculture, they are also engaged with hunting, fishing and gatherings also. So this one is cassava, maize and millet. So these are the and hilly rices. So these are the um, uh, types of crop that they are growing in or they are cultivating in uh, Shifting agriculture, primitive subsistence agriculture, or we can say slash and burn agriculture. The common name for shifting agriculture is primitive subsistence agriculture, shifting agriculture, and slash and burn agriculture. But shifting agriculture or primitive subsistence agriculture or slash and burn agriculture is known by different names in um, different regions tropical regions of the world so these are the tropical regions tropical region means tropical region means in between topic of cancer in between topic of capricorn so this is topic of cancer this is topic of capricorn in between these two uh, latitudinal uh, lines these regions are called tropical countries or tropical regions so mostly at present those people who are engaged with uh, shifting agriculture they are uh, located they are doing in tropical regions in the uh, tropical region uh, rainforest regions so, uh, so so the common name uh, for shifting agriculture are uh, primitive subsistence agriculture intensive uh, this one primitive uh, subsistence agriculture slash and burn and shifting agriculture but this agriculture system is known by different names in different regions of the world zooming in northeastern region of india so shifting agriculture is known by zooming in northeastern states of india milpa in central america for shifting agriculture in central america it is called milpa or uh, in South Af America, it is called Roja, Roca. In Indonesia, it is Indonesia and Malaysia, it is called Landang. In Central Africa, it is called Masol. So these are the different names for shifting agriculture, primitive subsistence agriculture, or we can say slash and burn agriculture in different regions of the world. Next topic is intensive subsistence agriculture. So what is mean by here? We need to know the meaning of intensive subsistence agriculture. Intensive means intensive use of land. Subsistence means we know that cultivation of crop that is done mainly for self-consumption. Agriculture means cultivation crop. That means intensive use of land cultivation of crop mainly for self-consumption it is called intensive subsistence agriculture so why they are called intensive means in a year in a year they are cultivating in a year on a particular agricultural land the farmers are cultivating two or more than two two or more than two crops in a same particular agricultural land during one agricultural year that means during one year that means they are using that particular land in a 
intensive way. Why means because they are cultivating uh, two or more than two crops on the same field because of that intensive agriculture. That means intensive use of because of intensive use of agricultural land because of that intensive subsistence. Why they are cultivating means mainly for self consumption. So flowing at the characteristics. It is largely found in densely populated region of monsoon Asia. So this particular circle one. So this region we have, uh, we have uh, the map shows we have two shadings, dark shading and light dark shading. Dark shadings are called wet rice dominant crops. Light shadings are called other crop dominated. So these are the regions. So mostly intensive subsistence agriculture is practicing in where means in the monsoon Asia. So this region shows the monsoon Asia. They are practicing in this region. There are two types of intensive subsistence agriculture. So intensive subsistence in agriculture, again we have two types. Intensive subsistence agriculture dominated by wet paddy. So wet paddy means we can say rice cultivation. So these dark shaded one, they are cultivating rice in a particular field, same field. They are cultivating two or more than two rice in the same field, this dark region. That is intensive subsistence agriculture. Cultivation, they are cultivating two or more than two crops. Why means for self-subsistence. That dark, dark uh, shaded one, uh, they are called dubious. Uh, they are cultivating, whatever uh, crop they are cultivating means they are cultivating rice. Intensive, another type of subsistence agriculture is intensive subsistence agriculture dominated by other than paddy. That means this light shaded one, they are called this light shaded one. I have made an arrow, uh, red one that is moving, right? One showing dark one and one showing uh, red one. So this light shaded one, they are cultivating other than rice two or more than two crop mostly wheat barley they are cultivating in a same particular land two or more than two wheat and barley in order to subsist themselves because of that this is this particular they are cultivating two or more than two other than rice because of that it is called intensive subsistence agriculture dominated by crop other than petty so flowing are the characteristics of uh, Intensive subsistence agriculture dominated by wet paddy cultivation. So we know that what is meant by wet paddy. So rice is called uh, Why rice is called wet paddy means in order to grow rice We need lots and lots of water in order to grow grow rice. So sometimes rice is called water intensive crop Why water rice is called water intensive crop means in order to grow rice we need uh, lots and lots of water in order to grow uh, rice because of that rice is called water intensive crop also it is also called wet 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 paddy so flowing are the characteristics dominated by uh, rice crops so dominated mean, means so we know that what is mean by intensive right so we know that what is mean by intensive we know that what is mean by intensive so intensive means intensive use of land that means they are cultivating two or more than two crop on the same agricultural land during one year because of that that is called intensive so dominated by rice cultiv crops right rice cultivation that means in a year on a particular agricultural land they are cultivating mostly they are cultivating rice so for example in a year if a particular farmer is cultivating three crops on a same field means two crops they are cultivating rice and another one is they are cultivating another than crop sometimes both uh, uh, if a particular farmer is cultivating uh, sometimes a particular farmer may cultivate three rice in a year also so because of that mostly they are cultivating uh, rice because of that dominated by rice cultivation or wet cultivation dominated means mostly most importantly, most of the time they are cultivating rice on a field. Means in a year, if a particular farmer is cultivating three crops on a same field, means two or sometimes three times they are cultivating rice on a same field.
during one year. Small land holding. So this region, they are practicing intensive subsistence agriculture. Why means in this region, we have this region, usually we have a high density of population. Because of that, the because of high density of population, every farmer, the land holding is very, very small. So because of that, in order to subsist them uh, and their family, they have two. They are compelled to cultivate two or more than two crops in the same particular agricultural land because of large size of population and small agricultural land. So in order to subsist themselves, they are compelled to cultivate two or more than two crops on the same particular land, agricultural land. Intensive use of land. Intensive use of land means they are cultivating two or more than two crops on the same land, agricultural land, because of that intensive use of agricultural land. Limited use of machinery. They are not using less, they are not much using machines. Mostly, most of the agricultural operations are done with help of family labor. So, mostly agricultural operations or agriculture activities are done with help of family labors or family members. Here, mostly they are using manures in order to maintain the fertility of the soils. So, manure means we know that decomposed, bio, biological decomposed uh, are called manures. So, these are, uh, we are, farmers are putting manures in the field in order to maintain the fertility of the soil. Here, the per unit area production is high, but per low labor productivity. That means in a year, if a particular farmer is cultivating per unit area in a particular small land, agricultural land, they are cultivating two or more than two crops. That means per area production is high because they are cultivating two or more than two crops on the same agricultural land. Because in a year. So production is mostly count in a year. Because of that, per area production is very, very high. But if you talk about the per labor production, so mostly this type of agriculture system is done with half of family labor. So if we divide the labor wise, per head means per labor head means it is very very low because most of the uh, agriculture activities are done with half of uh, labors, family labors, not by machines. Because of that, if we divide per labor production, per labor productivity, uh, productivity means that is very very low because of mostly they are not using machines per area production high because of they are cultivating two or more than two crops in the same agricultural land and they are using apart from rainfall so mostly the uh, intensive subsistence agriculture dominated by wet patties are they are cultivating mostly regions or area which uh, which are receiving high rainfall during monsoon season mostly they are practicing in this region so apart from rainfall they are also using irrigations in order to grow the rice because rice is a water intensive crop so these are the characteristics of intensive subsistence agriculture dominated by wet paddy cultivation next topic is intensive subsistence agriculture so intensive subsistence agriculture we have two types one is dominated by wet paddy and one is another other than wet paddy so other than wet paddy means most usually we can say wheat cultivation crops other than paddies Crops out. So other than paddy, what they are cultivating means they are cultivating wheat, they are cultivating wheat, soya bean, barley, millets. They are mostly cultivating other than um, rice, they are cultivating this type of crop. Why means because mostly this region they, they are receiving less number of rainfall, less rainfall. Because of that, they have to cultivate. Uh, other than rice because why means rice is a water intensive crops rice is a water intensive crop and another maybe it may be because of climatic condition be in order to grow rice we need a warm and humid type of climate so mostly uh, wheat soya beans barley millet they can grow in a very cold very uh, dry climatic condition less rainfall regions because of that they are uh, they are uh, cultivating these type of crops 
uh, in a region uh, intensive subsistence agriculture dominated by wheat other than crops such as they are cultivating wheat soya bean barley and millet they are cultivating these stuff characteristics so if you talk about the characteristics of intensive subsistence agriculture dominated by crop other than wet pd means most of the characteristics are same as above means same as above means these characteristics same as above means these characteristics are same except uh, instead of dominated by rice we are going to dominate it by cultivation of wheat cultivation Ap apart from wheat they are cultivating barley millets and soya bean so we are going to change instead of rice we are going to rice wheat other characteristics are same small land holding because of large size of population intensive use of land same limited use of machinery most of the agriculture activities are done are without family labor manure is used per again this one is safe same again here they are using less irrigation in this they are using less irrigation why means because uh, in the region where intensive subsistence agriculture dominated by other 10 petty means they are cultivating barley wheat and millets because these uh, crops are mostly mostly less water intensive crop because of that they are uh, using less irrigation facilities they are not much using irrigation facilities so these are the some of the characteristics of intensive subsistence agriculture dominated by crop other than paddy other than paddy means other than rice crops such as wheat barley soya bean barley and millets so these they are cultivating these type of crops so this is the soya bean soya bean import so with uh, so from soya bean uh, we are soya bean is categorized as a pulses right so soya bean is used to produce uh, vegetable oils and we are using these two as a these uh, crop as a pulses thank you